Hey, friends all over the world. I want to share a very important message to women. Now, um, this message is born out of the fact that I had a very interesting conversation today with, with a sister, and we were talking, and they raised some interesting points that I want to, I thought I should touch on uh, in this message, and I, I'm, I'm really not trying to offend any woman, but I want to share something with you. You know, we live in a society of conflict. We live in a society of competition. We live in a society where people are competing for value and significance. We live in a society uh, of misogyny, that is hatred of women. We live in a society of misandry, that's hatred of men. But I wanna, I wanna talk to the sisters and let you understand something that maybe you didn't consider. And as a leader, sometimes we don't think about the implications of this when we're, when we're talking to our, our, our precious sisters. Uh, sisters, let me tell you something. You're significant. You're valuable. I'm not telling you that to, to, to pump your head up. I'm not telling you that to flatter you. I'm telling you that because it's absolutely true. You are not called to compete. You're called to complete. Can I say that one more time? You, you are not called nor created to compete. You are called to complete. And so I want you to understand that sometimes, sometimes uh, for our sisters, sometimes they don't understand the, the deep significance that they carry in the heart of God and the plan of God. You know, we, we talk about how Eve ate the fruit and so she ate the fruit ushering in a curse. But we don't talk about the fact that Mary gave birth to the fruit and ushered in a blessing. You know, somebody asked me, they said, but, but the Bible, you know, they talked about the Bible. They said, you know, the Bible seems to only talk to men. It seems to be a misogynistic. It seems to be um, uh, just patriarchal. It, it, it seems to be so uh, chauvinistic. It, it, it focuses on men. But what about, what about women? What, what, what about us? Why does the Bible only talk about he, but it doesn't talk about her? And this is what's going on in the culture. But we got to look at certain things. For example, why did Jesus visit the Samaritan woman at the well? Why did he talk to her? Why did he tell her about who she was? A woman trapped in sin, trapped in immorality, a woman who was broken, yet he speaks into her, filling her well with living water to the point where she went out and evangelized the whole city. What about Mary Magdalene or Mary of Magdala, who basically was a prostitute, basically a woman, an immoral woman, and yet she becomes the centerfold, the, the champion of the gospel. These women, these broken women were the first, they were, they were the last ones at the cross and the first ones at the, at the grave. <laughs> see, see, sisters, let me, let me, let me tell you something. You are significant. And we have a culture that is being born today that is teaching enmity between men and women, teaching women to compete with a man, teaching women to fight for affirmation, fight for attention, fight for success. But we were never meant to do that. We were called to co-labor together. Understand biblically that in Genesis 1.26, when God says, let them have dominion, he was talking to both of us, not just men. He was talking about male and female, woman and man, co-laboring together, exercising their authority together, not competing with one another, not trying to fight for the same spot as one another. Our roles in society have been reversed. We have men wanting to be women and women wanting to be men. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about sexual identity or, or, or sexual preference. I'm talking about when we talk about significance in society. And I want you to understand that you are 
significant. You are valuable. God has a purpose for your life. And there may be some women that say, well, I already know that. I need you to tell me that. I don't need you to affirm me. Well, well that's, that's great. That's fine. But I'm choosing to encourage you. I'm choosing to encourage you. I'm choosing to lift you up. And I'm choosing as a representation of the clergy, a representative of the ecclesiastical order, I'm choosing to give you the truth. You see, because we as, as, as a church have done a great disservice to women. Now, this is going to get me into a whole lot of trouble, but I just have to say it. We've done a lot to diminish the role of women in ministry and in the history of the church. We don't talk about Juniah, who was a female apostle, who was actually referenced to be a woman of note amongst the apostles. It was so controversial that the Catholic Church, under the auspices of the Pope and, and the, the order of the time, tried to have that scripture removed because it would imply that God uses women. We don't talk about that God chose the womb of a woman to implant the seed of the savior of the world. That ought to make you think a little bit. Glory be to, to God. We don't talk about the fact that the church is depicted as the bride of Christ. You see, there's something significant that we're missing here. And because of the secular humanistic culture that is, is bent on degrading women, watch this, under the false pretense of empowering them. In other words, that, that we, we, we want to teach you to be something you're not. So that by being something other than what God created you to be, then you'll have power because you'll be competing with a man. You'll, you'll be able to compete with men. God never called you to compete with men. He called you to complete with men. Can I? Oh my God. That's why evil's referred to as a helpmate or a help suitable. In other words, she was well equipped. Solomon said, whoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. In other words, you are incubating the favor that a man needs in order to fulfill his purpose. You are equipped to help the man get to where God's called him to be. That's a tremendous calling. Whether you are behind a desk of a business, whether you're at a daycare center, a stay-at-home mom, whether you're driving a bus, whether you are an executive for a Fortune 500 company, no matter where you find yourself, your assignment, your purpose, your gifting, and your anointing is off the charts. You ought to look yourself in the mirror and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm all that and three bags of chips because God made me and he, he put in me what was necessary to execute his purpose in his creation. You're not chopped liver or a second class citizen and you have no need to try to compete with a male whatsoever. There's no competition. There's no competition at all. There's no, there's no competition at all. So I just want to encourage you. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not trying to patronize women or do anything like that, but I just want to encourage you to let you understand that you are significant. God does have a purpose for your life and you ought to hold your head up. You ought to stand flat footed and say, you know what? God loves me. He made me fearfully and wonderfully. He, the mold was broken when he made me. He didn't make a mistake. And everything about me, everything he created me to be has a divine purpose. And I just need to know my creator. See, when you know your creator, you know your purpose. And when you know your purpose, you know your assignment. And when you know your assignment, you are walking in destiny. You're not an accident. You're not an object to be taken advantage of. You're not a mistake, but you're beautiful. Encourage yourself. Stop trying to compete for what you don't need to compete with and be who God has called you to be. 
which is a daughter of Zion. Please share this and remember Jesus is Lord.